Um, they were written by 50 composers. Each composer was asked to write uh, 20 uh, pages. So that means that we have 50 different styles and then uh, various musical arrangements. And then Doremi, initially it has 6,400 uh, scores, but we use a portion of it. Um, a lot of annotated data, which is also a plus of why we wanted to use uh, Doremi. Uh, and yeah, as I said, we use only 1,000 images for the model training because we want to have um, a similar distribution uh, with the two data sets. Um, so different from uh, VAAs, and you'll see the whole architecture here. Maybe it's, it's a better slide to uh, to start with. I'll just explain this a little bit. Um, so usually the problem that exists in GANs is that uh, you need a paired uh, set. So you need to have the exact same score that is printed and the, uh, it's counted by which is handwritten, but that contains all the same elements and uh, has the same layout on the so we looked into what other um, architecture would kind of be able to to take on pairing scores, um, and cyclegans are one of the few uh, very few models that are able to be able to search on pairing scores. Um, and as you see here, differently from other models, we have two generators: generator G and generator F, and then we have two discriminators: D1 and D2. And we'll have more losses than usual. We have a sort loss there, here, and then we have um, this complex cycle consistency loss, a forward loss, and a backward uh, consistency loss. Um, so the whole idea here is to go from one domain to the other, but back again, and that is why we have two consistency losses. Um, so in this case, let's consider printed scores to be domain A. And I'm just showing. Um, one of the use cases where we use scrap sets. Um, and then domain B is going to include handwritten scores. So what we're trying to do is, from this distribution of data from domain A, we're generating an image that has to be similar to domain B. And that is why the distribution loss, the dresser loss, will look into the difference between this, uh, this generated um, score and the uh, Domain. So basically, we want this loss to go down. Um, similarly, here, we're generating based on the distribution here, uh, but then comparing to the domain A distribution. Um, so, in the end, uh, the forward consistency of the backward consistency loss, uh, what we're trying to see is you basically, when you're generating something here, uh, think that it's coming from B1, uh, goes back again. Uh, into the F generator and is going to try to see if we're producing in the end, we're producing the same image that we started with. So this and this, um, when we put this into generator F, it should produce a similar image that we see there. Um, this is more clear, so I'll go to the next one, which again looks at the losses um, to just uh, complete the understanding. Um, so we'll look at two different losses, but I also include the identity loss, which we we'll looked a little bit at, and it's very similar to um, the cycle consistency loss. Um, and I explained them already. So one is trying to look at the difference in distribution, uh, the adversarial loss, and the other one is ensures that the output is very similar to the input, and it looks at, at that difference. Um, so just, I think uh, the idea is to to be able to produce, we know that this is working only when we produce something that looks very similar to the input that we started with. So the, this is also a disadvantage because there's a one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, whatever is generated by the generator F or G, um, there's only one, uh, one image that can be produced by using that image. Uh, so the evaluation setup, and I'm just going to talk a little bit. Uh, as I said, the data says that these are these two. And we started by using the whole uh, the whole score, the whole image, but there is a difference uh, in image size and resolution. So then because of uh, these, usually the computer vision models, they 
really have these um, limitations with the, the resolution of the images we use. And in this case, the sample dense actually the highest resolution that is usually used is uh, 512 to 512, but because of efficiency, we use a 256 and 256. And we started with uh, thinking what would be the types of score that we want to use and what uh, the granularity should be. We started with full page images, um, which is, I said, are resized to produce the 656. Um, and then we wanted to work on props. Um, so we crop the, the stage first and then crop the stage multiple parts by using just a window that was arbitrary, uh, arbitrarily chosen. Um, and then that was because we wanted to address the clarity loss when we're doing resizing. Uh, when we're using a smaller crop image, then this addressed uh, better. And then for the backbone uh, for this unit is the unit and the ResNet. So this is the first one. And as you see, the learning doesn't really work because the generated image does is not really a good mapping of the input image because we're using a one state and we're producing a full page. Um, and then we thought, okay, let's look at cropping, but let's not make it symbol level. We call it symbol level, but it is not because we try to include more than one, uh, one symbol at a time. And these are two samples of what we see. And I cannot say in the input because as I, as you saw, there are two different inputs that go in. Uh, so this is just a sample from the previous course and the other one from the Hendrickson score when we're using the cropping. Um, and then we see two examples of what is generated. Um, and yeah, they're not actually, that one is not the one produced by this one, just so, you know, this is not, it's just uh, more for visuals. So it's not the exact one. So here we have some uh, results from using the UNAT backbone. Um, as you see, would you think this is something that is handwritten? Not completely, but coming there could, could, could go there. I think it's uh, more of like an investigation if there is room to, to work with these type of um, generation. Um, and this is with using ResNet. Um, something that we noticed is we see a lot of um, lines that are being added. So you won't always see five state lines. You'll see six, seven. Um, and here are just some losses um, from the losses that we I was showing earlier. Uh, work on the one is a discriminator and the other one is a generator loss. Um, this is what we don't want to actually um, see, but um, right. This what it is. And similarly here as well. And just some measures. But the problem with these measures is that uh, these are made to kind of fit the problems that are used uh, when the cycle in the task of cycle guns are used. The initial cycle gun paper is looking at um, actually a problem where the domains are very close to each other, so the images uh are the shape is very similar um but it changes very little so the problem at hand was uh going from images of horses to adding uh zebra stripes to horses and then back again because the zebras and horses look very similar so you're just looking at adding stripes in the horses uh, so these are the scores also look at that type of problem um but so that is why they're not really good measures into telling us how, how the base perform uh, for um, for OMR. And that is why we thought, oh, let's look at, does it work with object detection? Um, and it doesn't. Um, and that is mainly because we need in painting before we try to do something similar or to train the whole, um, the whole object detector in scores like this. And why we cannot do that is because if this was working perfectly, we would have been able to use the same coordinates uh, when we're doing object detection, because in object detection, we want to have a bounding box of the object. That is how we're going to supervise learning. So that's how we're going to learn uh, how an object looks, the class and where it is. Um, 
So then we would need training that uh, from these images. Um, and because there is no uh, pixel to pixel level uh, annotation when we're doing this generation, that is why we cannot do it. But if we're using sequence modeling, that could work because even we don't need the coordinates for stuff like that. So we just need a, more, a sequence. So that is why there is some room to work uh, with such generated Henry scores in um, sequence modeling um, for MR. Just the conclusions. Oh, yeah, thank you. So as I said, it wouldn't unless we have like a large, a larger training set uh, to begin with, an annotated data set to begin with. Uh, then it would be easier. But actually, we don't need annotations for the handwritten scores when we're just doing style transfer. Um, but I think it also gets in the problem on how many styles we have and how does that. There is one single style in this case. It, it matches everything to one single style. And I think that is why we're also losing a lot of information and in pixels because everything is just going to be matched in one. Um, but I think if we do use larger sets, there is, um, or even go further to go in a, into a symbol level and then scale uh, up to maybe a stable level and scale up with the data as well. Um, that is something that then could be used with object detection not with masks, because then again, we need pixel level, but with object detection, where we do still have some room of error in bounding boxes. But this would be very helpful in cases when we're doing, we're using um, work. <laughs> like, yes. looks like it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, when we're doing more sequence uh, level things, and we, we still have a very good idea of the, the symbol, what the symbol is, uh, we might lose pitch to some extent, uh, but like, again, that is a trade-off. Um, so yeah, I think there is some some room for improvement. Going to that question that we can improve. Okay, the good question that we need the precise information of what the what the symbols are, but also in some examples, I mean, we, we don't have a way of ensuring that this type of transfer doesn't change the comment. Exactly. So the point is to be able to then go back again to print the score once that's why the two generator and two discriminator a whole model is about you have to be able to go to the exact same you looking can object. Have the function and, and, and still the, I mean, they still have like not the one. Do back the, the change anyway. Like you, you are, for example, here, how can you ensure that the printed score where this comes from is associated with a clef? Oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, you can see that. Actually, you can see where is it like uh, when in the paper we have some examples in the appendix. Uh, where we see actually what the, not the input, but, but what is the mapping of this in the printed score. So you'll see some differences, but they're more or less look same, the same object. Oh, so, do you have a similar how many out of uh, thousands of books like this actually contain different music? I you mean how are we sure that they're correct? Like, like how are we sure but how sure are you? 
<laughs> well, that's that's the problem. It's a visual inspection. Right. So it's, uh, then it's hard to measure. It is hard to measure because it's visual yeah. inspection. And that is why I was saying the scores. And your impression is that is good is good with the extent with the how small the data sets are. I think it's pretty good because these are very data hungry. Yeah. And uh yeah, check the appendix in the paper and you'll see some examples on this mapping. <laughs> So I can sell the paper as well at the same time. <laughs> I'll get more reads. Um. So you mean what is the motivation that yeah, we had? I suppose that the end you know, is to try an error that I have you know, or an error of the system. You know? uh, and, it's just maybe opening um opening these possibilities to working with handwritten scores. Like there's a lot of amazing work coming from uh University of Alicante and uh, Jorge's group. Um that sorry. <laughs> Uh, but they're usually working in common Western music notation or uh, older scores, um, but not that much work is actually done in Hadrian scores, um, because as we said, we don't have so many annotated sets. So this kind of solves that problem to some extent, and that it was our motivation to open uh, the ex even the existing OMR solutions uh, for printed scores to Hadrian scores.